Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, obviously, today we're going to be talking about Load Ninja, which we're super excited um, to jump into. Um, this is a super, super new innovation that we came out with. It's actually a product that we developed in house. So we're so excited to jump into a little bit more about why we created it and um, what the story is and how you can get started. So my name is Searsha Hinksman. I'm a marketing manager here at SmartBear. And I also have Keshav with me, who's our product manager for Load Ninja. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, thanks so much, uh, Searsha. And, hope, uh, and I'm really excited to be on this webinar and uh, walk you through Load Ninja's capabilities together today. All right. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of an idea as to what we're going to go through today, um, today we're going to talk about um, what the load testing market looks like at the current moment and kind of give you a little bit of context as to um, what spurred the need for a tool like Load Ninja and how we kind of got started um, developing what would be the most useful for load testing teams today. And then we'll go over what Load Ninja is, um, how it can benefit your teams, and then specifically get into the platform and go through a couple of the scenarios and use cases that you guys will be familiar with. So what are some of the challenges that um, you can overcome by using Load Ninja. And then we'll open up the floor for a Q&A. And I know um, a few of you have seen it as I um, had asked you guys to help me out with the uh, sound check here, but uh, Zoom actually has a Q&A feature and a chat feature. So if you have any questions at any point, um, feel free to type them into the Q&A in the chat and I'll try and get to them as we go along. And if I don't get to them in that exact moment, don't worry. I'll read them through um, during the Q&A and we can get those answered for you. So without further ado, I'll hand it off to you, Keshav, and we can get started. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sersha, for that great introduction. So let's dive right in. Um, you know, this is some common, uh, if you, we've been looking at the market and load testing extensively for a long time. And, um, you know, in general, if you look at the way software development has evolved over the course of, you know, over the next last 30, 40 years, it's always been to keep up with the growing demands of consumers. And consumers as a whole, right now in today's day and age, there's a digital saturation for consumers. You and me, we're both tech consumers today. And uh, if you notice, like there's technology, there's applications, there's software in every single uh, aspect of life that uh, we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. And so because of this, we are one, we're extremely picky as consumers. And two, we move from one platform to the next. If our expectations of great features, uh, great functional quality in the existing features, and finally, good high performance applications, those, those expectations are not necessarily met. Right? And software development, software product teams who are passionate about building great products have always done their best to, ad uh, to adopt and adapt with the growing needs of consumers. They've adopted great uh, new, uh, new methodologies in order to deliver uh, applications faster with different uh, features. For example, with Agile and DevOps, the whole point is to deliver uh, a new enhancement as well as fix existing issues much faster and, deliver, uh, and release them into the market. And also there's been some, uh, some interesting and new uh, testing methodologies like the shift left testing that, in, that uh, advocates for testing uh, much earlier on in the development cycle and, and making QA the central focus of the development and delivery. These methodologies have all evolved in order to meet these growing demands of consumers. Now, specifically, if we narrow in on like agile DevOps and shift left testing, what we've seen is like the engineering component uh, of building an application has adopted pretty well. Right? So that's why you have different methodologies, you have different tools, uh, like IDEs, for example, have had all these, uh, there's like been some great progress in the, in the space of IDEs uh, in order to make sure like development can happen much quicker. Functional testing tools, including our very own test complete, for example, they were, uh, they were all adopted in order to meet, the, again, the growing needs of consumers, allowing them to like, uh, allowing product teams to, do, uh, to test on the fly and programmatically drive them and incorporate them into their development cycle. However, performance testing, if you think about it, has, is, is still looked at as, as, as like the centralized monolithical function that many product teams are, even, are scared to even touch. Right? Uh, if, uh, there, there will be enterprises, we have a few customer uh, prospects already on, and customers on uh, this webinar right now who are from enterprises and they can attest to this. Like, um, 
when we think about performance testing, it's looked at like this, this big black box. Um, and product teams, even teams who are passionate about building great products and want to build high performance products, um, don't necessarily know where to get started. Or once they get started, it becomes hard for performance testing uh, tools to keep up with the growing pace of software de development and delivery. And this is because primarily software uh, load testing tools have not really made uh, much strides over the last 20, 30 years in the load testing ecosystem. Now, if you think about it traditionally, uh, when we looked at the market and looked at specifically load testing tools that existed, we found a few deficiencies. The first deficiency we think is to how inefficient right now, even to this day, it is to create and playback test scripts. Now, traditionally, if you think about it, uh, applications at the end of the day, uh, return some sort of dynamic responses from their server, right? Many applications use dynamic values that change every time. Uh, now, with that said, when a, a, a load testing tool right now, in today's day and age, most load testing tools uh, are built, use, uh, uh, record uh, test scripts using a protocol uh, recorder, right? The whole point of the protocol recorder is to capture all of the HTTPS traffic and interactions between the server to the client. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, this many applications use dynamic values that changes over time, right? So you as a performance tester have to do something called correlation in order to make sure that these dynamic responses uh, are carry forwarded from the server to the client and from the client to the server. So like, correlation is the process of capturing and storing all the dynamic responses from the server and passing it on to subsequent responses, right? So this means that you have to make sure, for example, all the dynamic the cookies, for example, the cookie information and all of the other contextual information uh, are stored and then passed on to the right transactions in uh, when going from the server to the client, right? So this is primarily how uh, uh, recording and playing back test scripts occur. So this is a this is a very very tedious process. So while recording is relatively easy in all of these existing tools, playing back involves this process of correlation. And a typical example of correlation I'll tell you is like, for example, you would have to identify all the dynamic values uh, uh, in, in all of that, that huge voluminous chunk of HTTP or HTTPS traffic that you've just uh, uh, recorded. Uh, then you'll have to like find all the server responses containing the dynamic values. Then you'd have to capture that uh, dynamic value in a parameter replace every single occurrence of the dynamic value with the parameter, and then verify changes during playback. To get a script ready for playback involves a lot of tedious process and overhead. Uh, typically, a load tester would be spending about 50 to 60% of the entire time just correlating, right? And so this doesn't necessarily make, uh, the, the whole point of load testing is to test, but if you're spending about 60% just writing, getting the script ready for testing, that actually adds a lot of overhead to get the application ready uh, um, uh, for the load testing process. Then we have uh, the capturing of client side calls itself or playback, right? If you know, if the, over the last 10, 15 years, Ajax uh, client side JavaScript has become extremely popular, right? You will have, for example, client side changes within the application that don't necessarily communicate with the server. Uh, for example, like you would have a, a pop-up, for example, that that we, that triggers every time you add items to your checkout uh, to to the cart in your e-commerce application. That doesn't necessarily have to communicate directly with the server, but that is still being that is still part of the consumer experience, and that is still part of the uh, the experience that you want a performance test. And because you use because existing tools uh, record traffic from the protocol level for the test script, you will not necessarily be able to directly capture this in, this this transaction because there is no traffic that's going from the client to the server for, for executing these client side calls. So because in order to do this, for in, in order to make sure that uh, you can actually capture um, these client side changes, you have to essentially go and go to like additional scripting and uh, massaging. This is a well-known limitation of open source tools like JMeter, for example, because JMeter is not a browser and thus it has an inability to execute JavaScript specifically over here, client-side JavaScript. And so JMeter, as well as like all the other commercial tools that use JMeter under the hood, face this issue. And so you have to do a lot more additional scripting, probably have to download some external plugins in order to get it ready for playback uh, when you're actually capturing client-side interactions. The second deficiency is when you're using proprietary load generators. Every single tool in the market right now uses its own version of a load emulation agent. The whole point of the, these emulation agents is to simulate load. Uh, and their goal is to be as close to real world as possible. 
And it's a good intention, right? You, these emulation agents, they do want to mimic uh, the real world uh, scenario of, gener of, of uh, realistic load. However, they will never really truly mimic the, mo the most, uh, they will never really truly mimic what, what the end consumer is using, which is a browser, right? No, your end consumers are not using emulators. They're using a real browser to access your web application. And as such, an emulation agent will never truly represent the most realistic representation of performance of your web application. Uh, just because of how every single uh, uh, emulation agent is its own proprietary mechanism to generate load. And that's the reason why when you go from tool one to tool two to tool three across the performance testing tool ecosystem, uh, you will have differences in res request response times just because of how the load is being generated. Then the third problem, which we think is a huge problem right now, uh, or deficiency, is the tedious translation of performance data. Performance testers and performance engineers um, identify the bugs using, identify performance issues, identify any of the bugs that occur in the web application at scale uh, using performance testing tools. And, th and ideally, once you've identified these issues, you have to send them off to the development team and the development team will use these, uh, will, get, will have enough information to debug and fix these issues. However, the, the, the data that's returned by, back by the performance testing tool is fundamentally not the same data that developers use for debugging and, uh, and uh, fixing the issues. This, for example, on the right side is a quick example of uh, what I mean by the data that's returned by uh, performance testing tools. Essentially, because you're recording HTTPS traffic between server and client, you're going to be getting this huge long list of all the, the, the pass fail ratio and the response times for all the requests and responses that occurred between the server and the client. Now, as a performance tester, you will then have to take this big magnifying glass. You will have to like look through every single piece of information, identify the bottlenecks, and some, and then somehow translate that in a way that's actionable for your developers. And this entire handoff process between performance tester to the developers is tedious and it's long. Um, and so this is the reason why performance testing, again, primarily by product teams, has always been looked at as this monolithical centralized function. Because even the data you, that you get back requires a lot of translation. And to even be able to translate this data, you'll have to go through a lot of certifications. You'll have to read through a lot of different documentation because the data is different for different tools. So you'll have to train yourself constantly uh, in, order to, in, order to even, in order to even be capable to translate this data in a way that's actionable for your development teams. And finally, the, the combination of the correlation, the parameterization of all the dynamic values, uh, and the translation of data to, develop, to engineering stakeholders, this, all of this process is, is one, is tedious, but also it involves a steep learning curve. Right? And, and you always have to keep battling the tool constantly in order to get your script ready for playback, in order to, make, in order to be able to successfully translate the data you get back from your performance testing tool in a way that can be actionable for your developers. Um, and this is the reason why this is the reason why performance testing has has unfortunately been uh, looked at as a centralized monolithical function. It's something that people are always really get started with. And uh, this is the reason why product teams who are really passionate about performance testing don't really know uh, how to get started. They want to build high performing applications, but it's it's become a huge challenge for them. And so this is when we decided to do something about it. And this is why we built uh, Load Ninja. And so we're really excited to be uh, showing you. Uh, what Load Ninja can do and what it's all about. So Load Ninja is a cloud-based web uh, application um, for a load testing platform for te load testing web applications. And its whole point is to allow you to create and playback test scripts in minutes, in ninja speed, but we, that's how we call it. Uh, while we, after we do this, we have, the, we have the promise to generate true load, which is realistic load, meaning like we will essentially simulate tens of thousands of real browsers at scale uh, and give you uh, data from these browsers um, and this uh, data that matters, that performance metrics that matter to you as a performance testing team. Uh, so this, the whole point is that you can spend less time battling your test script and spend more time building scalable applications that your end consumers will love. So I just want to walk you through all the different capabilities I just mentioned before we dive right into the demo. One is we have our InstaPlay recorder. The whole R and Play recorder is this patent pending technology right now that essentially drives the browser to perform the transactions that you've recorded in your test script. Right? So this means that you, you, we are going to be essentially abstracting all of the correlation uh, and the dynamic programming of any of the, uh, any of the, you know, the, 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 non -dyna the, the dynamic changes that uh, propagate from the server to the client. So 
this way our hope is because we're not going to the protocol level we will be saving up to 50 to 60 percent of your time uh in in the actual load testing we our promise is to generate true load which is the most accurate representation of performance of uh, load on your web applications so we will so when you say 10 virtual users or 10,000 virtual users in your load test we will be simulating all those all those virtual users as real browsers and these browsers will be interacting with your web application in real time based on the test script that you've just recorded because we can because we're using real browsers we have the ability to essentially directly interact with the virtual user that is going through an issue uh, see their browser live in real time and debug any of the performance issues that you might encounter or any of your virtual users uh, might encounter at scale. And finally, it's data that your developers can directly use. Uh, the cool thing about using browser-based data is that the data is coming straight from the browser's DOM. And this is the same exact data that your developers use every day to build applications, but also to debug applications. So if, say, for example, there's a performance issue, you can very quickly isolate which specific element of the DOM is facing that specific issue, and you can hand, that, uh, hand those uh, issues off to your development team, and they will have enough information to debug this application and hopefully deliver high-performance applications uh, much faster to the market. So with, with that said, I want to dive right into the demo. Uh, just before we start this demo, I want to just set up a hypothetical scenario. And it's easy to like follow through on a hypothetical scenario over here um, because we can all be stakeholders here. In this case, our context is that we have a smart pet store application. It's an e-commerce application that allows uh, consumers to come in, search for, and buy pets online. Uh, some of the core pages and features that we want to load test, particularly given that you know Black Friday is coming up in a few weeks, is uh, the fact that uh, we want to be um, load testing our home page. We want to make sure that the home page can uh, handle all of the traffic that comes in. We want to be load testing uh, the, the feature to search for pets and the ability to add uh, pets to the cart. Our load test conditions just for this demo is going to be very minimal. We're going to be having 15 virtual users and our test duration is going to be for about five minutes. So with that said, let me actually start. Uh, let me go back to our application over here. And right now we're in Load Ninja. Hope everyone can see my screen. So this is the home page. This is the home page or our dashboard where you can see our most recent web tests or recent scenarios. And uh, our entire web, our worldview uh, is organized within Load Ninja through the lenses of a project. Think of projects as little spaces or folders for you to organize all of your test assets. And these test assets could be um, could these test assets could be, for example, your test scripts your scenarios or your load test runs and reports. So, uh, you can always, you can create unlimited projects in Load Ninja. Um, right now, I've already created an existing project for the sake of this demo, which is our webinar demo project. And over here, you can see that we have different web, uh, web tests, load testing scenarios and test runs uh, organized uh, directly in the view. You'll notice that we don't have any uh, web tests uh, recorded, which is our test scripts. And so we're gonna be doing just that. Before I click record, I do want to show you our example pet store application. So this is the application we're going to be load testing. Uh, it's an e-commerce application uh, where you can log in, you can search for different pet items, right? So I can search for, say, for example, poodle. I can add them to my cart once I log in, or I can also like potentially, for example, access the different categories and see all the different available items um, on, in my pet store. So. I'm going to be copy pasting the URL, the, the main URL that I want to be testing. And then from here, I'm going to click record. As soon as I click record, we will get this initiation dialog that asks, asks us to enter the URL of the web application that we want to test. So let's put that in and then decide which specific form factor we want to be testing this application. In. Uh, this is particularly useful if, say, for example, you have a responsive web application that you want to test across uh, say multiple device, device sizes, like say a tablet or a mobile phone, right? So you can essentially decide the specific form factor over here uh, for recording your script. In our case, I'm gonna be doing a simple uh, desktop uh, based resolution. From here, I'm gonna click start recording. As soon as I cl uh, click start recording, notice what just happened. I, I was taken directly into the InstaPlay recorder I did not have to do any sort of browser extension downloads. I did not have to talk to a salesperson to get the extension. I did not have to like go through like some sort of like registration process in order to like download it, download this uh, an executable on my local machine. 
Uh, the InstaPlay recorder essentially spins up a real browser over here that renders the, the, the web application um, that you've just entered uh, in the URL. So now let's start interacting with our web application, like how our end consumers would be, uh, well, how we anticipate our end consumers would. So let's go ahead and click login. Notice that for every single uh, new page load that happens, uh, it's getting recorded as a new step on the left. From here now, let's actually go ahead and search for a specific pet item. Let's say, for example, I'm gonna be searching for Poodle. I'm gonna be adding this to my cart, uh, and then I'm gonna be logging out. Right, a simple, simple process to like just go from login, search for an item, and add it to my cart. And now I'm gonna click stop over here. So, so what I just did was I interacted with my web application through the InstaPlay recorder as I would expect my end consumers would. Uh, I then, uh, every single new page is represented as a step in the script, which is very useful when say, for example, once you, once you run the load test, and I'll show you when we run the load test as well, you can see the degradation directly and out of the box of every single page that you recorded directly without you having to like essentially understand uh, you know, again, as I mentioned, we take a big uh, magnifying glass and identify all the different transactions that occurred between uh, server to client and group different pages together. You can essentially abstract all of that and uh, and um, essentially like uh, see the degrade, uh, see uh, understand how your end consumers would use your application. So these are all the different steps, and each step represents a page, as I mentioned. And you can also see, for example. Um, all the specific actions that have been taken by you or your end consumer on that specific step, right? So, and these things I can modify at any time. You can also change the name of the, of the step. So I'm gonna say, uh, this is the home page unsigned. I'm gonna change the uh, third step to home page signed. Right, so because I signed in. And so this way you can like easily, for example, name, rename your steps um, uh, depending on the page you're on and make it consumable by other stakeholders as well. So when they see that, they will immediately know what uh, they're talking about. So now I just wanna make sure that we uh, change our think time before I, get it, before I click playback. And our think time is essentially the time it takes from one transaction to the next or one step to the next. And right now it's set to, be, it's set to record it, which is our default which essentially says that the same, the, just use the same thing times that you know, that you used while recording it. And if you've noticed, like I was talking while we were recording, so it might take a really long time to play back this test script. So I'm gonna be setting this to minimum. So this min minimum is essentially hundred milliseconds, which is the lowest possible time it can take from one transaction to the next. And this could also be useful for when you're actually load testing, for example, directly just the server time, uh, so server time responses, response rates without necessarily, um, having uh, additional client side uh, think times to, uh, um, to hamper the data. So with that said, let's click playback. So notice that all the interaction that we just did is getting played back. I did Poodle, I'm adding it to my card and I'm logging up. And there you go, we just, we just ran our first, uh, we just recorded and played back our first test script. So. I, I've mentioned this before, and I'm pretty sure there's like some other load tester that um, that my other performance testers on the on the webinar today. What we just did was they uh, we just essentially recorded a, a test script and played it back without having to do without having to even look at any of the protocol traffic, without having to like search for all the dynamic uh, IDs and correlate them programmatically or through like maybe some sort of automation tool. We don't have to do any of that. That is all abstracted. And so we can do this at scale as well. So this is just for one which one user, for example, would do the playback as we do like an actual load test, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, and when we put like, when we add like, say for example, 50 virtual users or 10,000 virtual users, all of them require no sort of uh, correlation whatsoever in order to get the script to play back. So, so in the interim, sorry to cut you yeah. off real quick, but we have a question that came in. Um, does Load Ninja integrate with test complete web testing? Uh, as of now, we don't have uh, any integrations, uh, but we are planning on adding those integrations soon. So those inputs are really helpful to drive a roadmap. So in our, well, now that we've recorded our test script, let's go ahead and actually do two, a couple of things. First, let's, let me go ahead and add, uh, for example, uh, an external data set. 
And, you know, if you think about it, load testing, like load testing is hard um, in a real world scenario is hardly when like, you know, a thousand virtual users are going to be essentially have, sharing the same login information or a thousand virtual users will, will pretend or whatever virtual users you're thinking of at scale will be searching for the same pet item. Right. In a, in a real world situation, you will have uh, different virtual users uh, searching for different uh, pet items. They'll be they'll have different accounts, you know, so. Because of that, we have the ability to data drive uh, all of our input. So I, ha I already have an external data set, if you can see over here. So we have the first column, which has a list of all the items I want my virtual users to search for. And then we have another column, which has just like a number of animals in the inventory, for example. So I want to essentially map this first column, which is uh, my external data, to the input that I just recorded in, my, uh, in the InstaPlay recorder. So let's go ahead and click on this upload data bank. And this is where you can essentially uh, add external data set, data and can and map it to your input data. Let's click browse. I may go ahead and uh, search for the right item. It's on the demo. And then I'll just, it's uh, in my local machine, I'll find the demo data bank CSV. I'll click review. And in the second step of the, well, for mapping, I will essentially see a preview of uh, the items that exist in my external data set. In this case, for example, we have, uh, you know, our first column, as I mentioned, which is the poodles, uh, dog, and uh, the, the different dog items, the different cat items, and so on. And then we have another column. Then I will be mapping that specific data item with the input that I have recorded. So let me go ahead and click map this to my search animals. Uh, so this way you can essentially map your input with your uh, data from your external file. We also have the ability to essentially map uh, uh, your URL as well. So you can parameterize, uh, for example, your web applications URL. Uh, and so all your query parameters, for example, can all be par parameterized uh, with an external data set as well if need be. In our demo for this case, we're gonna keep this simple and only parameterize uh, and, and data drive uh, recorded input, which is the portal over here. So I'm gonna click save. And now I'm going to be click, click playback over here. So now you'll see we're logging in. This time notice that I search for the virtual user or the during playback search for a Labrador retriever. All right, so in this case, for example, we just took uh, one of the items from our uh, external data, which was a Labrador ret retriever and uh, got it and inputted that during our playback. Um, and if you, if you re recall, during the recording, we had actually searched for Poodle. So this way we randomly pick out uh, different data items and uh, get it ready for playback. The second thing which I wanna show you is essentially the ability to add assertions or validations. Many a times you wanna make sure that one, um, your validation returns successfully. So you get, for example, uh, information, you, you wanna make sure, for example, um, like uh, you want to make sure like at the, at, at the right scale of uh, users hitting your application, uh, the, the text-based information that you, that you show to your end consumers is accurate. Uh, and also you can potentially do like, you can uh, potentially want to check for complex validations, like making sure, for example, the sum of different items in your, in your checkout cart equals the final item that you see in say your invoice. Right, so you can do potentially uh, complex validations as well using Load Ninja. So to add a validation, you just have to click this add validation button over here. And this way over here, you'll then be exposed to the screen which, uh, which has two types of uh, validation that you can add, which is a, one is a basic text validation. So over here, I can essentially say, uh, you know, I wanna add a, a, a pass validation. So I wanna make sure that I want to make sure, for example, that my, uh, that my uh, say the search for poodle page contains the word dogs, right? So I can add that to my validations. And then I can add another validation, which is a fail validation. And this one I'm adding one, of course, like showcase what happens when, uh, when you actually add, a when, when actually one of your validations fail. But also many a times, uh, we've seen performance testers actually add validations that will fail on purpose in order to make sure that the server is not returning information that uh, you don't want your end consumers to see. So I'm adding some fail validations. So in this case, in my last step, I want to make sure that the page doesn't, uh, I want to make sure that the page doesn't contain puppies. 
So I am intentionally saying that the page contains puppy when I know it doesn't to showcase what happens when uh, the validation will fail. So I'm added two validations and you can see those validations over here directly. So in, under every step, right? And you can modify these validations at any time. And now I'm gonna hit playback again. We're logging in right now. We'll be searching for a different item. This time we're searching for Poodle again from our data bank because again, it's going randomly and now it picked up Poodle. And then finally we get our playback results. Notice over here that we've had um, everything but one step failed. And the last step which failed was essentially the fail validation. Because if you notice, it says our fail validations does not contain um, uh, uh, the word puppy in it. Right, so that's something that uh, we can add potentially over here, and this uh, will also this is very useful in our load test as well, which we'll show you in a few minutes. So, right now I was in the recorder, and what I just did was I just recorded my first test script. I added it. I I um, got my test script ready. I made sure that the test script works uh, by playing it back, and I'm and I verified that it, it matches all the transactions that I believe my end consumers would, without having to do any sort of correlation or programming of dynamic components. Uh, which is which our hope is will save you about 50 to 60 percent of effort uh, We then got this uh, we then data drove all of our external input using our data bank Which has all of this external data set data items that we want to integrate this with and finally we added a few validations uh, To make sure that the web application is returning the right information that you expect your end consumers would see at any scale So now I'm just going to click save So let's say, let's call this, to give this uh, script a basic name, so basic search. We also have another good question, Keshav, real quick, um, is whether you can choose which browser or which device to use, such as an iPhone or an Android. Uh, good question. So right now, we only, we only give you the ability to look at the uh, resolution, right? And so, uh, for example, and I'll show you in a second, now that I've saved my script, for example, let's go ahead and record the script and I'll show you what I mean. So over here, if you notice, we have this, uh, when, you, when we're recording itself, we have the ability to select a resolution, right? Over here, we select the actual resolution for the set script, so it'll essentially render uh, the browser in that specific resolution or in that specific form factor. We don't use real devices, if that's what you're asking, like, for example, Androids or iPhones to do the load testing itself. So in contrast to some of our other tools, like cross-browser testing has a device lab where they'll run um, those tests on real devices. That's not the same scenario here. We'll run them in real browsers, but not necessarily like on that. We don't have a device lab specifically dedicated for Load Ninja. Yep, but that said, we will be spinning up real browsers, as Sersha mentioned, on real servers. Right, so these are all like real servers that are coming in and, and uh, the browsers that come up will start interacting with your web application in real time. So let's go ahead and um, record two other test scripts really quickly. The second test script which I wanna record is to test our login functionality. So I'm just gonna be doing a basic login search. I'm gonna search for enter login. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna save this script. I'm gonna call this login. And of course, I want to verify that I can play this back. So I'm just going to click playback real quick. So notice that the playback is actually happening as well. This is using recorded time. So that's why it's going not going fast because it's using the same time that I have recorded uh, that, 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 uh, that we captured during the recording phase. And then oh, I've, now that I've saved this uh, second script as well, let me go ahead, create a new recording. And this time, all I want to do is is just have one test script for the home page, and I, this I'm just I will just record this and I'll just stop this, and this essentially I want to make sure like my home page can handle all this traffic, so I want to see specifically the home page over time. So let's go ahead and save this, and I'm going to call this home page. I'm going to click submit. So we, we just recorded three test scripts. So now let's go ahead and create an actual scenario. This will be back to our test script, over, uh, our project over here. And notice that we are in, the web tests are now populated with three different uh, steps. 
So now we want to start configuring our load testing. Uh, uh, we want to start configuring our load test by itself, right? And so the way you configure load tests in our world is through a scenario. Scenarios are essentially like uh, the reason why it's called scenarios. So like essentially, it's like it's representing a real world scenario, right? A real world use case. So you can essentially create a new load test scenario, which, where you can configure your load test and start running your actual test. So let's give this load test uh, a scenarios friendly name. So let's call this a duration based test let's go ahead and say that this test will have about 15 virtual users and let me now go ahead and add all the different test scripts that we know exist uh, that we want to start testing in this uh, specific load test so in this case let me say that I want to have about 20% of my uh, virtual users should be on the host should uh, start go interacting with the home page uh, test script I want about 60%. Uh, well, let's let's do 20 20% uh, here as well with the login. And finally, let's do about 60% of my virtual users. So 60% of the 15 virtual 15 virtual users to come in and interact with my web application based on the steps I've recorded in the basic search script. Right. So this way you can distribute how you want uh, your virtual users uh, to start interacting with the web application based on your scripts. Then I can now configure how I want this load test to even run. So we have two types of configurations. We have a duration-based configuration that shows that essentially allows you to say, for example, that I that you can that um, that that you want the specific load test to run for for uh, for a fixed period of time. So if you notice in this uh, helpful tooltip, you can you can for example configure how long you want to run this test for, which is the duration. You also have the ability to configure the ramp up time. So this is the warm up time for your test. So during this time, Load Ninja will essentially gradually increase the increase the load from zero to whatever the virtual users you've configured uh, in the specified ramp up time. So in this case, let's go ahead and add about uh, five minutes to the load test, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my ramp up time to a minute, and I'm gonna say the delay between the, my iterations is about one second. Right. So this means that uh, as the test as the test goes from uh, from step one all the way till the end of the step in that specific script. We will wait one second before the virtual user goes back to step one. You can also potentially configure this load test to be iteration based, right? So you can here you can say, for example, instead of you wanting to like configure the load test to run for a for a fixed period of time, you can say you want the load test uh, to run in such a way that all of your virtual users go from step one till the end of the step of a specific test for a fixed number of times. So it's more of like the number of loops that the virtual users will go through. In this case, in, the, in, um, in our example or in our demo over here, I'm going to stick to duration base for now. We have our playback speed. Remember, we had a playback speed which defines how you want the think times to be modified during playback. Uh, we have a global setting in the scenario. I'm going to still modify this to say minimum so that again, like we don't use the same uh, recorded think times that I have because I was talking a lot while doing the actual interaction as well. And finally, you can figure how you want to handle, uh, how you want your load test to handle errors. Um, this, is, this is something which uh, we think is very cool, which is uh, something brand new to the market, which is our debugger. So what we do which are with our debugger is anytime, for example, there's a virtual user on a browser that is encountering an error, we will essentially hold that connection with that browser live. With to, to a, and, and you as a performance tester can then go into that browser and interact with that browser through the JavaScript console. Uh, and that way you can essentially interact with the console, inter um, essentially directly get access to that uh, web application through that specific browser under question and debug it all in real time. So uh, the whole point of the error handling is to make, you know, all these highly critical, this high critical, uh, this uh, critical performance issues that you'll encounter at scale, make it super simple for you to go in and isolate those issues and also potentially debug them. Uh, and so the debug time is essentially the time we, we, you will, uh, the time we will hold that connection live. So in this case, I'm going to be setting it to five minutes. So we will be holding that browser connection live for about five minutes. So with that said, I'm going to click save and run. As soon as I have configured my test, I, I can now start and I'm satisfied with my parameters. I can go ahead and start running the test. Now what we're doing is essentially based on the number of virtual users that we've uh, defined in our configuration, uh, we are essentially allocating how many servers it would take 
to sp uh, for those specific virtual users. And every single uh, virtual user uh, is essentially going to be interacting with your web application through a browser. So be it 15 virtual users or 15,000 virtual users, 150. Our entire goal is to say, is to essentially simulate the most accurate representation of load on your web application. So all of those virtual users at any scale will be interacting with your web application using a real browser. So this way, uh, one is you can be rest assured that the data you're, go is, you're gonna get back is very accurate because again, it's very accurate and realistic to, the, uh, to what you're gonna be seeing in real world. And two, the data you get back is coming right from the browser. So it's very actionable and it's the same data that your developers are used to working with every day. So the handoff between performance testing to development should hopefully be alleviated uh, and, sh and should be quickened with the uh, Load Ninja. So the tests are now starting. And we're not right now in the load testing uh, results page. What is happening over here right now is that we're seeing in real time the charts um, take off. Notice that, for example, um, we're now seeing in, in real time uh, the, the virtual users starting to interact with our web application based on our three test scripts, which are uh, the logins, the home page, and the, and the basic search. Over here now, you can potentially configure uh, this, um, this chart itself to show you information that you think is more valuable to you. So remember I mentioned before, like uh, the way we capture our test scripts is, is uh, essentially our all of our steps within each script is representing a, an actual page. This is particularly useful when you wanna see the degradation of your pages. So I could potentially like see, for example, within the basic search, uh, uh, test script, I want to see the degradation of the sign-in page uh, as, uh, the, as the load test progresses. And I can see that directly over here. So you can see, for example, the sign-in page is now um, how the performance and how the response time of the sign-in page is as the, as the number of virtual users in, increase. So this is particularly useful because traditionally, if you use any of, any of the other conventional tools, you will again have to like essentially be, be very cautious in order to make sure that the HTTP or HTTPS traffic that you recorded matches the, the page that you wanna, that the, the page that, is in, that you wanna uh, essentially understand the degradation of. And then you'll have to like essentially, as I mentioned, like make sure that uh, the pages match the, the right page that you wanna see and also make sure that the transactions uh, relate to those specific pages. So again, that process is very tedious, and this way out of the box, you can, for example, see the degradation of your pages. You also get, for example, nap timings information straight from the browser. So response time, time to first byte, DNS time, and so on. You can see your error count as well as your success count visualized in this app in uh, these charts as well. You have something called the view inspector. Um, which essentially what we'll do is we'll, because we're using real browsers, we can actually show you in real time how the test is actually progressing. So what we're doing over here is we're connecting to four random virtual users. Uh, we're showing you how the test is running. So these virtual users are actually interacting with your web application based on, uh, the, based on how you've configured your test. And also potentially if you say, for example, identify any issue, you can have all the steps required in order to re reproduce this um, and then hand it off to your development team as well. Uh, we're seeing this connecting issue over here because uh, we have some uh, Wi-Fi issues right now. But essentially, the whole point is like this will start interacting with your web application as smoothly as possible. And you can see this happen in real time. And then we have our debugger. The debugger is where we'll capture all of the different errors that you encounter within the load test because that's the whole point. Right? Um, load testing fundamentally is one to ensure that your web applications can handle the right load, but also to understand at which point it's gonna degrade, at which point is your application gonna break, or, and what are the specific issues that happen at, at those points in order for you, to, uh, for you to isolate them and debug them. So anytime there's an error, we capture that information. And remember, we've had a few, we configured this test in a way that we know we're gonna get a few errors because of the validations that we've added. Some of them are going to fail. Uh, and so once you can, once you've identified those errors, we capture them in our debugger and we essentially allow you to see the network trace directly on those specific elements from the DOM. So this is all the information we're getting straight from the browser's DOM. So you know, for example, which are the specific elements that are having some sort of performance issue. You can then 
go in and see in real time again uh, uh, browser-based DOM information that your developers can then use to debug the application. So right now, out of the box, I can see, for example, that this specific web element, which is the font, awesome web font, is not getting loaded. So there's a 404. Right? I also see, for example, there's other fonts over here that are not getting loaded. And these are this is this is a problem for me, especially at scale, because this is essentially causing some sort of performance issue on my web application. And you can see this across all of the different errors that we capture in the in uh, in Load Ninja over here. So this way, you can get a holistic view of like what the specific issues are uh, in your browser in uh, in at scale uh, because of the browser-based information. But also, you can essentially send this off to your development team because it's the same data that you're, they're used to working with every single day. Finally, the icing on the cake, uh, which uh, many people have found value in, especially our, our customers right now, and uh, some, of our pe some of the people we've spoken to where this product was in beta, is our debugger. So remember I mentioned how uh, we have the ability to configure what happens when, when there's an error? Right now, we have a performance issue over here on this specific virtual user, and we're holding that connection live. So once we hold that connection, you can essentially, as a performance tester, go in, and interact with, that, with this specific browser using our JavaScript console, right? So you can actually start interacting with this and also get the network trace directly over here. So this way, anytime there's some sort of performance issue, especially the critical ones, you can just run the load test and dive straight into that specific browser, which is encountering this issue at scale. And that way you can get, uh, um, you, can, you can be rest assured that you can very quickly try to isolate the issue and also, once you isolate the issue, you can get the data that you, that uh, your engineers are used to working with on a regular basis. You can, of course, also be captured anytime there's like a load testing issue. You also capture the image. So over here, for example, you're seeing that uh, we have an image over here that is uh, having an, um, this is the image of the home of the home page in the basic search test script. And the reason why we're capturing that is because there was a validation that failed. So in case there was, say, for example, a timeout, if, say, the server was not responding and it was giving a 404 for the entire page, we'll also capture that page information. So this way you can essentially have a screenshot of that image. You can then create a ticket for this in whatever uh, product management or software development uh, ecosystem or tool that you're using, and your developers can easily reproduce those issues and debug them in real time. We also give you the ability to save the report and the test results as well. So you can save this as a PDF. So if you're happy with Load Ninja and uh, you, you as, an, as an individual come in and use this application, we have a free trial, of course, uh, and you're satisfied with the tool, you can always, like, for example, potentially ask uh, um, your friends and your colleagues as well to use this tool um, and add them to your own team because load testing is uh, a group effort. Right? So we have a user management section where you can add different people to your team. Uh, and essentially right now, once you add your email, we'll, we'll set, uh, we'll set up uh, your credential, uh, credentials of the person you're adding, and you can send those credentials to them via an email. So that was just a quick demo, um, and I hope people found value in this. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, this is just a quick uh, view of the pricing page over here. So many people have asked us this over the past couple of weeks since this product launched, which is like, you know, you're, you're giving us the ability to uh, correlate and save a lot of, uh, and uh, score, uh, you're giving us the ability to play back test scripts without doing any sort of correlation or any sort of programming of dynamic components. Uh, and you're using real browsers to simulate the load. So the data is pretty, pretty great so far. So people worry always that because we're using true load technology or real browser technology, the price are gonna be very steep. Uh, we are very competitively priced. Um, it's it's about $17.99 for about 1,000 virtual users. And our hope is, per, this is per year, of course, not uh, not per month. And our hope is uh, these prices should be lucrative enough for performance testing teams to become successful with load testing, but also product teams who are passionate about load testing, who don't necessarily know where to get started, who don't have the bandwidth, for example, to uh, or like the, the time required to like set up a centralized load testing uh, ecosystem or function to do their performance testing. Our goal is like this product is flexible enough and quick enough for you to like essentially become very, very successful and become pro performance engineers in, um, in, in, in just whatever time you have. Uh, we have a 14 day trial period, of course, so for you to evaluate the tool and we'd be happy to like talk to like in case you want to extend it as well. So, so with that said, I want to get into the question. Yeah, we got a bunch of really good questions in here, so I'm super excited to get into them. So um, the first one that I'll bring up is um, 
are there is there a maximum amount of virtual users that you can run um, in Low Ninja currently? Uh, so right now we've uh, there is no there is no maximum necessarily. Uh, we we've, we've so far we've tested it up to like I'll be completely honest like up to a hundred thousand virtual users, but there's no limitation on like doing it more, right? So if there's a need, we'd be happy like discuss that and uh, get help you get set up. There's there's right now as of as of now there's no real limitation. I'm sure on the trial that might be a little weird, but if you get in contact with us, we'll make sure that you can run. Um, the test that you need to run and make sure that you can get the information back that you need. Um, and then, uh, so someone else, I'll get back to that person actually. Um, so one other question that I thought was pretty interesting um, was really just about the roadmap. So we're talking about um, one of the teams on here uses GA, so Google Analytics, um, to determine which users and browsers um, their user base is made up of and so 60 percent of one of their sites um they use iphone on safari so they mm -hmm. were wondering if it's going to be in the product roadmap over the next um couple releases or whichever timeline um is it going to is there going to be an option to be able to specify like we want to run this load test on an iphone on this browser yeah so we definitely have the device on our, our roadmap um the the specific browsers though uh, we are still like evaluating which specific browser we have to prioritize um, because that is the question we've, had, we've been asked before. And so um, our, uh, Peggy, I think Peggy asked us this question. So I'll be happy to connect with Peggy offline and get a more um, get and dive into like our specific use case as well. I, I see Lino has asked a question regarding Mocha script. Uh, it's, it's think of it as JavaScript. So I know many people have asked us, it's like, oh, why, why did we choose Mocha? It's actually just pure JavaScript. And so hopefully, um, uh, we've had a few developers who use uh, JavaScript to like modify the test script, and so that's the reason why we, we added Mocha script. Uh, we will we have we will be think, uh, using having the ability to reuse JMeter scripts and other uh, different uh, frameworks as well eventually. All right, and then one of the other questions that I'll actually answer this one first. So, can you access the correlation if the engine gets it wrong, or if you want to parameterize it? Uh, which specific correlation I'd be curious about. So there's like, um, are you talking about, uh, is, it, is it any input data or is it anything else? So maybe we can, again, Steve, uh, dynamic values. Yeah, so um, uh, we, right now we, we have, you can, you're, right now we're driving the client directly to uh, do those transactions. So we don't necessarily, for example, call, by ourselves, for example, uh, go to all the HTTPS traffic. We do capture the di dynamic session data in the JavaScript directly. So if you want to like be creative, you can use the Mocha script in order to like make and you know play around with that directly. But that would involve scripting. Okay, and then one of the ones that I saved for last because I was super excited to answer it is: Is it possible and just as easy to test APIs with Load Ninja? So the answer to this question with Load Ninja specifically is no. Um, currently, Load Ninja just only web only tests web applications, but SmartBear in general has um, Load UI, which you can use to load test your APIs. Or if you're trying to get more information about how your APIs are performing, you can do that with an alert site. Um, alert sites are synthetic monitoring tools, so you can run um, basically like mini tests in production, but you can also do that with private APIs and you can do that within different environments as well. So if you're looking to like set up your API and then see how, where, or I guess which steps, or if you have a set of API calls, like where it lags, you can do that within those two tools as well. So then another question has been asked by Tracy, which is does the, what integration of test complete does this allow? So right now we don't in in integrate with test complete, but we have been getting a lot of requests from people like you um, to essentially re uh, integrate with our functional testing tool. So we're definitely like, this is definitely part of our roadmap and this input is helping us prioritize this better. Yeah, I don't doubt that um, like smart, all of the smart bear tool integrations are probably gonna be yeah. prioritized and come fairly soon, so. Yeah, so this is just, uh, and uh, to, to give you some context, like uh, the product has been, we've had a bunch of different beta customers and the product's been uh, live for about two weeks and already we're getting a lot of good feedback about the capabilities um, over the last couple of weeks. And uh, right now, at the end of the day, what we want to do is we're changing the paradigm over here. Load testing has not changed over the last 20, 30 years. 
And right, and we want to essentially come in and say, like, listen, like people want to do performance testing. Let's empower them to become uh, better at building high performance applications. And so this is our first step in building in empowering individuals to make great products. So hopefully you can. We would love for you to all to like everyone on the in uh, on the webinar to try the platform out, and you have a direct correspondence with uh, with uh, our team directly. So this is the the same email that our engineers use. Right, so you can essentially contact us directly. And we're also available on Twitter. You can just like DM us directly. Um, and that way we'll like have our direct correspondence and hopefully we can uh, help you build, do your load testing better. All right, so I know. I know that we asked you guys, or you guys asked us um, a bunch of questions. I actually wanted to ask you guys a couple questions um, if you want to answer them. There's only four. They're not um, super crazy or anything, but we're just trying to get a better understanding of like who everyone is. Um, and also make sure that if anybody had any specific questions in terms of like your specific use case or price point or whatever it may be, um, you can get in contact with us or we'll contact you after this if you want to set up like a customized demo or just ask us any questions or literally just give us feedback about things that you'd like to be prioritized um, in the roadmap in the future. Um, we're happy to do that. So we'd love to get your guys' feedback. Um, so feel free to answer it. I'll keep it open for a little bit and keep running through uh, questions as we go along. So we got a question regarding whether this will replace load complete in the future. The answer is like um, load complete does certain things which uh, load ninja uh, really good, and load ninja also does uh, some pretty great things. Uh, right now we are supporting load uh, load complete all throughout this year and next year as well. Uh, but uh, moving forward, most of our investment in terms of like building out new capabilities will be in our SaaS platform, which is Load Ninja. Right now. And there's another question. So, how is the recording handled for single page applications? Uh, great question. We actually will capture single uh, the, uh, the recording for single page applications as well. Uh, if you've noticed, uh, the URLs will not change in single page applications. And so if you want to potentially, for example, uh, add different steps and uh, capture different changes, we have a manual way to like essentially uh, add a new step. And again, every single interaction will be captured automatically in, uh, in that single in, in under, under the new step that you've added. So um, like I, I would love to get into that, but, uh, I think we're just about uh, two minutes in, but I'll just really quickly show you, for example. So we're right now in the in the recorder. By the way, Load Ninja is also a single page application, so completely understand. But essentially over here, uh, you have the ability to add new step. And so if you can add a new step, for example, say new. And so then like, essentially anytime you interact, you can, uh, with that specific application, you can then, for example, start adding new steps and make or put all your transactions under that step. And then when you're ready to go to the next page, just manually click on add new step and then go to the next page. And so all those transactions will be then recorded on that new page. So that way it's, it's, that way it's the same exact thing. You can record and playback. You don't have to do the add new step. It's just easy to classify different page pages um, by doing this. Okay, so it looks like we answered all of the questions and right on time. So that's really exciting. Um, if you guys also, if there's any questions or any feedback that you have that you'd like or you think of later, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Um, like I said, or like Keisha mentioned, there's a 14-day trial free to everybody. It's fully fledged, so there's no um, real limitations on that. So just feel free to check it out, see how it works for you, and send us some feedback. Um, other than that, I'll let you guys get back to the